Ben Bassler, welcome to TechWise TV Labs, Ben. Hey, Jimmy Ray, how are you? I'm doing good, man. You got one of the coolest names I ever heard, man. Ben <laughs> Bassler. Um, so let's, uh, you're going to talk to us about OTV. That's right. Um, what is it, man? Well, o OTV is short for Overlay Transport Virtualization, and it really is a very cool way how you can enable uh, layer 2 extension from an Ethernet standpoint over literally any type of transport you have in between. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. All right, you got me hooked there. So if you look at the diagram as we have it here, so if you look at two data centers that we, ha that we have here, you would see that we have a cloud in between. And oftentimes the big question is, well, what is this cloud? What does this cloud yeah. need to provide? Right, right. So the cool thing with OTV is you can literally have it running over any type of transport. So it could be a dark fiber, could be a DWDM, any type of service. As soon as you can transport IP, you will be all set. It's an overlay. Yeah, that's, yeah, perfect, that's correct. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, I think this is kind of cool. On um, this bottom bullet point, it's very interesting. No pseudo wire or tunnel states maintained at all. That's right. That's different. Yeah, that is a bit different if you compare it to existing technologies like EOM PLS or VPLS. Yeah. And this is wha one of the reasons why we actually thought from a Cisco standpoint it would be worth to build something new specifically for data center interconnects. Now, is this a misspelling MAC routing table? It's actually not. No, it's not a misspelling. It's probably something that you're not quite used to because typically if we talk about routing, yeah. it's really a layer three thing. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. But here what we actually do is instead of advertising routes or prefixes for IP, we advertise MAC addresses. So if I have a MAC address in one particular data center and I need to have it in the other data center, I need to make it known in the other data center, I essentially, under the covers, we use a routing protocol to make that information available to the other data center. Show me how it works, man. Walk through, All right. walk through this thing. This is, this is very interesting. So what we see here essentially is the data plane of OTV. This is really how does a packet or a frame makes it from A to B, from one data center to another. So we have a little MAC table here. General MAC table as every switch there would have it. Yep. But here the thing that you see is we have an IPB behind MAC2. So as a next hop, we don't just have an interface, but we actually have an IP address. Uh -huh. So this MAC address number two actually lives in our east data center in the for server two. And so that's why this entry points right here to this IP address. So instead of having it local within your data center, you point to an IP address that sits at the remote data center. So what happens is we have a frame that needs to go from server one uh -huh. to server two. Yeah. This frame essentially gets encapsulated into an IP packet. Ah, uh, okay, okay, there's where we're getting, right? So we've got to encap because I'm thinking, all right, th this sounds like proxy ARP, but, but now, okay, so, I, okay, now we've got the encap, okay, all yeah. right. And then as we arrive on the other side, we decap the packet and we present the original frame to the server. So the server over here thinks, well, this is a frame that just was originated in my own site and it doesn't notice any difference. And uh -huh. that's really what you want to achieve. Okay, okay, all right. It, uh, so what kind of overhead are we add in here by doing this then? Well, we add the overhead of an IP packet, an IP header, and uh, some GRE header that we actually use on top of that. But that's pretty much the overhead you would add. About what, 42 bytes? Yeah, that's, pretty, that's about pretty right. Small. Okay, yep. what's your next slide say then? Well, as I mentioned before, you also need to know how, where are these MAC addresses residing? So. Assume I have my data center west and I have a couple MAC addresses that I have Yeah, uh, like those would be in flux quite a bit. I mean, so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So these MAC addresses, you want to make those aware to the other sites. Yeah. And so OTV uses a protocol, and this protocol essentially advertises the reachability of those MAC addresses to the other sites. And the other sites will now build their own tables, but instead of, again, just pointing to a physical interface, they actually point to an IP address, and sure enough, it's the IP address of the site where the MAC address oh actually lives. Oh, that's cool. Lives. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Yep. So the good thing is you can actually just continue to use the commands that you're used to. So show MAC address table to look at your CAM table. But what you end up seeing is that this MAC address is actually learned through an overlay network. Huh, and okay. so operations should be pretty, pretty much the same as you know, especially within a site, no changes at all. So. No changes to spanning tree here, no changes to spanning tree over there. Everything is completely separated. All right, so I'm, I'm maybe jumping ahead here. Uh, and, and if I am, just go ahead and stop me, because it seems like to me, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking at OTV and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, well, obviously to do this, I must have an internal side and external side so I can control my spanning tree updates and how my ARP's handling this back and forth. 
Uh, and, and all this encapsulation, this sounds like a humongous config to set this thing up, which yeah. is something I'm not used to at Layer 2. Layer 2 is pretty simple. Yeah, Layer 2 is pretty simple, and so we try to stick to a very similar concept here. So what I have is a lab setup that I can show to you where I have an east and a west data center, and I'm going to add a third site. And so I can show you what does it actually take to add an additional data center to this topology. Oh, all right. Walking the walk and talking the talk. <laughs> all right. All right, so I'm going to show you. We have like two data centers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new data center. I introduce uh, an OTV Edge device that's mm -hmm. implemented using an XS7000. And then we will be able to actually show you how this server now has layer two connectivity to the already existing data center. OK, OK, that's cool. All right. So here we see a little configuration snippet that we're going to be adding. But before we go there, I'm just going to show you some basic verification, what you can sure, actually do sure, on the CLI. Sure. OK, so let's switch to the terminal then. All right, man. So, so it looks like we've got an SSH session set up to something. Yeah, so this is my SSH session actually to my OTV Edge device in Data Center West. OK, OK. So what I can show you here is I can do a show OTV adjacency. And what you see is I actually have an east data center that I can reach. So I okay. just have east and west set up for now. Mm -hmm. The goal is to actually bring up an additional data center. Okay. I can also show you what kind of MAC addresses we have. So far, I haven't had traffic running, so it's going to be a pretty small oh MAC sure, address sure, table. Sure. So show MAC address table for a particular VLAN. And so you see I only have a single MAC address. Uh, that's just a MAC address that has been floating around. Uh -huh. So now once I start pinging, you will see that this table actually will start uh, to be now. populated. So for that, I'm going to connect to a server that I have in the West Data Center. And I just, to start with, I'm just going to ping to the East Data Center. Sure, sure. OK, sounds cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up to this remote desktop session here. So I have uh, an IP config. You would see I have a 10.10.10.10.100 10, 10, 10, mm -hmm. uh, 10, 10, address here, so I'm going to ping to the other data center. And it happens to be the 15 address that sits in the other data center. Okay. Now, first, we're going to see a quick timeout. And then do the lookup and all that, right? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And then we actually get a reply from the other data center. So if I switch. Pretty darn quick, too. You went from three milliseconds to less than one millisecond. So yep. once you did that lookup, that it snapped right in place. Yeah, so it's going to be hardware-based forwarding. Once we have the learning done, oh really? okay, everything okay. is done in hardware. And oh you really want to have that because you might have a ton of traffic Heck between yeah, the data man. centers. Big time, big time. Okay, all right. So now if we look at the same MAC address table again, we Very actually cool. see two new MAC addresses. So the 44 is the one that sits actually in west, and the 55 is the one that sits in east. I like how this is, is labeled as overlay zero. Yeah, so now you know, okay, this MAC address, actually, I learned it through the overlay zero. If you want to have more detail, you can do a show OTV route. And this is where you uh, asked me before, well, what's about routing and MAC address yeah, tables? Yeah, 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 that, that's so this counterintuitive. Is this is where you see the, the exact IP address where this guy actually comes from. So the MAC address 55 is actually coming from this IP address. Son of a gun. All right. So now let's add the third side. Let's okay. add the south side. South side, I'm also connected to a to an S via SSH session to this uh, Nexus 7000. And so here, I don't have any configuration yet. Th so to show you how simple it is to configure OTV, I go into config mode, I create an interface overlay zero, and I have to choose what is my interface that's actually pointing to this IP cloud that sits between all those data centers. Mm -hmm. So that's my so-called OTV join interface. That's your physical. Yeah, that's okay. my physical. And here I'm actually going to define Ethernet 147. Okay. And it tells me, okay, Ethernet 147 has to have a particular configuration. I made sure that this is in place. Okay. And then you need to configure a, a couple other parameters. But the good thing is these parameters are exactly the same as we have it in all the other sites too. So it's not like different configuration. So I'm just going to copy paste that over from what I already have in West. So <laughs> show run interface <laughs> over zero. That simple. That's good stuff. So I'm going to pick, pick these, uh -huh. and I'm going to drop it in here. And so that's essentially my whole config that I need to do. Are you serious? That's as simple as it is to add a data center, just, just that? Yeah. Granted, you have to have 
your IP core set up, your routing should be in place, but well, you yeah, anyway but should still. have that. Yeah. I mean, so you can add and, and remove, if you need to, data centers that easily. Yeah. And okay. I, did, and I didn't need to do a change in the existing site. So that's also a nice thing. Oh, if that is cool. Because to compare that to existing technologies, this is where you would actually have to configure one or the other pseudo It's wire. very multicast-ish, isn't it? Where you can join and leave and, you know, and it, it prunes. It's, 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 that's very cool. That's, yep. that's a neat technology. That's exactly it. You know, we just got a couple seconds left here. But I want to I want to ask you a, a really uh, pointed question here. What I what would make me want to use OTV over something like VPLS? Okay. Or VPLS over OTV? I think that depends a bit on what type of transport you have. OTV, as I mentioned, works pretty much over any type of transport. Uh huh. Well, as if you look at VPLS, VPLS mandates that you have an MPLS-based transport. Mm -hmm. And so, lots of the enterprise customers that we see, they don't necessarily have an MPLS backbone per se, but they have some IP connectivity between the sites. And so OTV gives you really the benefit that once you have an IP core, you're all set to go. You can interconnect your data centers using line extension. Very cool, very cool. Well, Ben Bassler, thank you so much for coming on TechWise TV, man. Got to have you back. This is good stuff, man. All right. Thanks, Thanks very much, Jimmy Ray. <laughs>